Birth of Cool, how jazz great Miles Davis found his sound. Mornings in East St. Louis, Miles Davis sits as close as he can get to the radio. Louis Armstrong's soaring trumpet, Duke Ellington's sensational big band, dazzle Miles' imagination. Swinging sounds of jazz swirl together like colors on a pinwheel. Miles, curious, smart, crazy about music, slaps and sways, lost in the moment until his mom hollers, time for school. Kids taunt and tease him just for being skinny, shy, and dark. He plays baseball, swims, and boxes like a champ, but music means more. When I got into music, I went all the way into music. I didn't have no time after that for nothing else. Blocks from home, Miles watches riverboats blow pillows of steam while whistling, swishing up on the Mississippi River, bringing musicians from New Orleans who play rollicking rhythms in that Louis Armstrong way, the perfect place for a boy who loves music. At night, he lifts his window to listen. Melodies drift down the street, some croon country, some cry the blues, sassy saxophones wail through the night. Miles can't sleep, taps his toe, snaps his finger, can't stop thinking of ways to make music of his own. Summers. Miles loves Grandpa's Arkansas farm. Different sounds echo, the clip-clopping of his horse beats rumbling rhythms on dusty roads. Miles imagines music. Starry nights, walking down winding roads, the moon casts dark shadows while guitars twang backwoods blues. A woman's mournful voice sings through tangled trees, captivating him. Saturday evening church, soulful singing spills into the night. Miles listens. Rhythmic clapping, haunting harmonies lift his spirits. Sounds of Arkansas stay with him always. Thirteenth birthday, brand new gleaming trumpet. Time for Miles to find his own sound. Deep breaths, buzz lips, stuttering, squeaking, sweaty brow, tight face. He practices long tones over and over and over. Struggles to erase brassy notes and create that round sound that he loves. Treasured teacher, Elwood Buchanan, teaches Miles the right way to play clearly. Slaps his knuckles if he shakes those notes. He listens to the pro who steers him on his path. In high school band, Mr. Buchanan pushes Miles to play louder in his own style. He comes through with his best performance yet, but prizes still go to white kids. Miles burns with humiliation. Anger fuels his passion to move forward, play harder, be undeniably better than everyone else. He blows those feelings into something beautiful. They play loud, but I got the soul. Miles plays dance music while still in school, makes money, gains confidence, dresses in style, starts to improvise. He carries his trumpet everywhere, doesn't talk much, but is always ready to play. Bebop was about change, about evolution. It wasn't about standing still and becoming safe. Everybody's buzzing about a new form of jazz, bebop. Far out harmonies with fast flipping beats that hop and bop. Miles sets out trumpet, trumpet in hand to hear the inventors of this new style. Miles is blown away by the energy of the music. Charlie Bird Parker's blizzard of notes explodes from the saxophone. Dizzy Gillespie's trumpet ripples melodies like Miles has never heard before. The band plays fast and free. Then a dream came true. A lucky break, one of the bandmates doesn't show up. They ask Miles to play. The way the band was playing music, that was all I wanted to hear. It was something. 
In awe, he blows his trumpet, knees knocking, can't hear himself, too busy listening to his idols. Miles, not as ready as he thought, doesn't shine, but bebop flowers and flows through his body. Jazz is all he wants to play. Bird and Dizzy invite Miles to look them up in New York City. Thrilled and ready, he makes his plans. I ain't never been scored of doing new th scared of doing new things, and I wasn't scared when I got to New York City. His father insists he attend music school in NYC. Miles agrees, but it's just a ploy to find Bird and Dizzy. He takes the train to the city where jazz thrives, where his idols live, where he can learn to play his horn like no other. Miles wanders down 52nd Street, the street, where jazz clubs cram together, jazz le legends jam, and music history is made. Miles walks on air as he listens. Swinging sounds stream from every doorway. Mornings, Juilliard School. Miles studies classical music, practices trumpet between classes. Nights, he plays bebop downtown, uptown, gets a little sleep before school starts. Miles, itching to play jazz full time, wants to quit school and learn from the best in the clubs. Dad agrees, but warns his son, don't be like the mockingbird that copies others. Be your own man, be your own sound. Dizzy leaves Bird's band, Miles' big chance to take his place. He sounds like Dizzy, but he can't play as high. He can't play as fast. I was impatient with myself and most everything else, but I kept it to myself and I kept my eyes and ears wide open to, so that I could keep on learning. Miles hears music differently. He doesn't like to play a lot of notes. He only plays the important ones. Sometimes listeners put him down. They want Dizzy's rippling trumpet. He loses confidence, wants to quit every night. But Bird loves his sound and wants him to stay. He tells Miles, don't be afraid. Go ahead and play. Miles experiments and discovers a unique sound. He crafts and perfects his tone like a scientist of sound. When he finds the right note, he holds it savors it just for the beauty of it. The way you change and help music is by trying to invent new ways to play. Every night, he listens and learns from master musicians. He also boxes to gain strength and blowing power to control his sound. Overcome with exhaustion, yet feeling exhilarated, he knows he's moving ahead, away from bebop to create a new way to play his trumpet. Miles emerges with confidence and a restlessness he can't ignore. Determined to try something different, he becomes leader of his own group, his chance to share his music his way. Bird and Diz were fantastic, challenging, but they weren't sweet. Birth of Cool was different. You could hear everything and hum it also. Miles searches for talented musicians with modern ideas, musicians that inspire him like Gil Evans. They form a nonet, a nine piece band that plays slowly and mysteriously. The, bland, the band plays cool, relaxed with a lighter, lyrical feel. Miles's playing punctuates the new music with a poetic, melancholy solos, enchanting audiences and giving his voice a chance to grow. He performs with many other groups, but loses focus, can't find enough work, encounters tough times. His health declines. People say he's burnt out, even though fans still listen to his records. He knows what he's got to do. He climbs out of his dark days by playing his horn again. Then a chance meeting at a nightclub. Miles lines up. A surprise performance at the prestigious Newport Jazz Festival. He's thrilled. This is his chance to restore his faltering reputation. He scrolls onto the outdoor stage. The crowd sits in silence. He pushes his horn into the microphone. 
His sound pierces the air. The audience feels a chill as Miles plays his horn like no other. It was something else, man, looking out at all those people and then seeing them suddenly standing up and applauding for what I had done. He wails the melody with gripping emotion. His mystical voice hangs like a cloud, leaving space for each listener's imagination to wonder. The band sizzles and Miles shines. He's the star. The audience goes wild, standing on their feet, electrified and satisfied with the unforgettable Miles Davis trumpet sound. Like a human voice, like the woman in Arkansas, his horn sings, whispers, and cries as his musical notes become his words. His trumpet is his voice. Miles, hip, cool, stands as close as he can get and listens to what others play, thinking about what to change next. With every step forward, he breathes music.